Hey, it's a Humble Collector here. And today's video we're going to be doing uh, some unboxings. We've got three packages. Unfortunately, uh, when I opened the smallest one, I uh, made, made a mistake while recording. Uh, so I had to restart here. But the first set of items uh, that I'm going to be talking about, those in that envelope, are these two uh, death cards, which, as you'll notice, and which is kind of unusual, are for the same individual. Now, I know what you're thinking. Dude, you have like 40 death cards that you haven't even translated into videos on yet. Why are you buying more? Well, the reason is because this is a pretty unique set. So, uh, the individual here, when we flip this over, as you can see, is two separate cards for Francis Xavier Killerman. And what most likely happened, uh, because you can see here, they both seem to have been printed by the same company, HCOM, down there in the bottom is that his family probably had one printing done and didn't have enough or decided they didn't like the design and decided to do a second printing for whatever reason with a different design, which is kind of unusual. You don't see that very often. In fact, you can even see that. I don't know what the significance of this number is down here, but 611 on this one, 612 on that one. But yeah, pretty interesting. So that was one reason why I bought this, because the price was pretty good, and I don't have any of these, like, dual death cards in my collection, or, you know, two death cards for the same person with the different designs. Uh, but also, interestingly enough, the seller did some great research on this guy, uh, which I'll share with you now. So, uh, apparently he's from Ossenholm in Bavaria. He was an Unter officer and a driver. Uh, he was awarded various decorations, which I'll have to uh, translate when I get the chance. Um, but also, apparently he was able to access the German archives somehow and was able to determine that this guy was a member of a mortar unit, uh, Grenetten Werfer uh, Company 159. Now, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of hard to get service records for people who were in the military during World War II in Germany because they have really good privacy laws there. At least that's my understanding of it. So it's really hard to get those records unless you're related to the person. So how he did it, I don't know, but I'm gonna have to take his word for it there. Uh, he was killed about a kilometer and a half west of Uffholz in Alsace, France. Alsace, France, apologies, on February 4th, 1945. And that was the day that Uffholz was actually liberated by the first Free French Army. Uh, which means that this man here was actually killed by the Free French uh, during the liberation of the country. So not only is this a set of two death cards for the same person, it's actually a very interesting set of two death cards uh, for the same person. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I'll have to do a full translation eventually, probably do its own video. But that'll be far down the road because I have a billion other death cards ahead of it. Now, the second package here is World War I. These last two are World War I. And what's interesting is last video I unboxed a... Uh, a piece of trench art that belonged to a member of the Bloom Corps in the AEF. And Bloom Corps stuff's kind of started to interest me a little bit. So I've been keeping my eye out, and I actually found this uh, at auction. And nobody else bid on it, which is always my favorite way to get stuff. Because you pay less money. Oh, there's payment summary details there, so give me a second. Alright, so payment summary info is out of the way. So we'll take the rest of the stuff out of this package. And that appears to be everything. So yeah, these are a bunch of documents all belonging to the same man who is a member of the Balloon Corps. Uh, so first off here, we have... Uh, I believe this is his... Honorable Discharge, know ye that reposing special trust and confidence in the fidelity and abilities of William R. Shepard, Army Serial Number 106-1030. I do hereby appoint him... Oh, okay, this is a military appointment. Sergeant, 36th Balloon Company, um, USMA, of the... Wait, no. 36th Balloon Company... Okay, 36th Balloon Company A... SMA, I don't know what SMA is, but anyway, I have the U.S. Army of the United States to rank as such from the 27th day of November, 1,918. He is therefore carefully and diligently discharged the duty of sergeant by doing and performing all manner of things thereunto belonging. And I do strictly charge and require 
all non-commissioned officers and soldiers under his command to be obedient to his orders as sergeant, and he is to observe and follow such orders and directions from time to time as he shall receive from his superior officers and non-commissioned officers set over him, according to the rules and discipline of war. Given under my hand a U.S. balloon field, uh, La Testa de Bouche, uh, something France, uh, this 26th day of November in the year of our Lord, 1918, by Fred D. Babcock, 2nd Lieutenant, ASSC Commanding Company. Very interesting. Okay, so that's his appointment to rank a sergeant. Ah, here's his honorable discharge. I knew this was in here somewhere. Yep, 24th day of March, 1936. Okay, so he was a career man then. Uh, at 3.30 o'clock p.m., was recorded in record two, um... This is certify that William R. Shepard, uh, sergeant, last assigned to 32nd Balloon Company, uh, has been discharged, convenience of, uh, I can't read that, uh, William R. Shepard, state of Alabama, when enlisted 25 and 4 12th years of age, and by occupation, a mechanic. Uh, he had blue eyes light brown hair, ruddy complexion, and was 6 feet 3 inches in height. He was a big dude. Uh, given under my hand at Camp Grant, Illinois, this last day of May, 1,919. On the back here. So, let's see. William R. Shepard, he was inducted at Chicago, Illinois. Uh, first time serving... He was not mounted, had no horsemanship. Battles, engagement, skirmishes. Served in France, left U.S. October 20th, 1918. Arrived in U.S. from overseas April 18th, 1918. Uh, knowledge of occupation, any vocation as a salesman. Uh, no wounds received in service, good health. Uh, single, excellent character. And yeah, that's a pretty, pretty neat set of documents. Uh, Camp Grant, May 2nd, 1919. So yeah, pretty pretty cool. Uh, my dear Mrs. Emily K. Shepard, this looks like a copy. Uh, in a few days, your soldier will receive his honorable discharge and start for home, uh, bringing many fine qualities. Yes, the family must have wanted to keep that copy of that letter, but it's nice it was included. We also have a photo of Shepard here. Lovely photo. You can see his patches, everything. Well, that's a beautiful studio photo. Yep, William Rollins Shepard, Sergeant World War I Army Air Corps. Beautiful. All right, what we got here? Uh, State of Illinois. Uh, this warrant is presented to you in appreciation of your services rendered with the United rendered in the United States of America. Okay, so that's his like service card. Yep, service recognition board card here. People of Illinois realizing the sacrifices made by those who were in the military and naval forces of the United States during the World War, and desiring to show their appreciation of the services rendered, and in a measure to compensate for the financial loss sustained, have authorized this payment and grateful acknowledgement to you of the patriotic duty performed. That's pretty neat. Ooh, we got a looks like a group photo there. Which is pretty interesting. This is some really thin paper off, be careful. Yep, Sergeant William R. Shepard, his corporals, privates. I guess CH there would be a chauffeur. Wow, I'm surprised this piece of paper survived. It's like, I mean, you can see my hand through it. It's very thin. I believe there's still some more stuff in here. There's a couple more files here in the, the envelope. So let's see. Uh, duties of the chief gas sergeant. Ooh, sets of orders and things. I might do a, a sandal video on this guy because there's a lot of stuff here. And I know you guys want to see the last package. Uh, it looks like we got maybe. We got a newspaper article about him from 1961, I'm guessing. Very interesting. I'll have to see if he's actually mentioned in there somewhere. It'd be interesting. Oh, we got a copy of it as well. Homecoming for Ballooners. Very neat. All right, and then in the bag here. Ah, yes. Now this piece alone, I think, is probably worth 
what I paid for the entire lot. Uh, it's been damaged, unfortunately, as you can see, it's been taped back together there. But 36th balloon in France, beautiful unit roster there, or unit, you know, unit panorama photo. Lovely. It's signed on the back here. Uh, let's see. Dad Shepard, then Sergeant William R. Shepard, the tallest man in the outfit, standing center picture back row. Yep, you can see him back there. It's pretty neat. Yeah, shame it's in, you know, just kind of destroyed condition. But, I mean, at least it's a, it still exists. That's pretty neat. So I'll have to do some scanning. Try to save that. Yeah, we'll, we'll cover that later. So let me move all these documents out of the way. Come back in the folder here. Yeah, I got a pretty good deal on that grouping. And like I said, the Lucor stuff's kind of hard to find and pretty interesting. So overall, I'm quite happy with that. Guess we'll put that up there and everything else. All right, last package. I always save the biggest for last, as you guys know. And I, this one came on Monday, and I've been waiting kind of all week to open it. And I'm very excited because this is such an awesome piece. Um, and you guys probably know what I'm talking about when I say you see a piece of auction sometimes, and you realize you'd probably be okay overpaying for it. Luckily, I didn't have to in this case, but it was just such a neat piece. I could not help myself but uh, to bid on it, and I ended up winning for a pretty decent price, actually. Looks like this box was somewhere not super clean for a while, so hopefully everything inside is all right. Of course, I am opening it from the bottom because there's a billion shipping labels on it. All right. There we go. Should be the only thing in there. I'll check. Yep. Awesome. Alrighty. So this is really cool. Let's see, where's the best way to open it? Right here. Starting to see the shape of it now. Through the wrap. There we go. Ha oh, ha. Look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Alright, so. Clear this way. Alright, so. This, as you can see, is huge. Quite heavy. This is a Stein. Uh, made out of an artillery shell, and it is magnificent. So, I love trench art pieces, as you know, and this is just such a spectacular one. And I don't think it's showing up very well in this light. You can see it's engraved on the front to Trey Sassi, 1915. Now, Trey Sassi is an Austrian uh, fortress that was actually destroyed by the Italians during World War I in, I believe, July of 1915. Which means that this shell might have actually been made by an Austrian soldier who was stationed there before the fort was destroyed. And if you look at the um, detonator up here, I believe, yeah, as you can see there, there's like a uh, iron cross marking of some kind on it. So I don't know if it's a German-made shell or Austrian shell. Ah, uh, it needs a little bit of cleaning, it looks like. So it looks a little, a little dirty down there. But, uh... Yeah, definitely a neat piece. Wouldn't mind actually, well, if I could clean it out without hurting it, it'd be kind of cool to drink out of it, but I don't know if I'll actually do that or not. But yeah, pretty decent sized shell. Um, still got the driving band on it, which is pretty cool. And on the bottom here, what we got like DCN. 
and there's another marking right there, but I can't quite make it out. Oh, but yeah, overall, pretty well-made piece. It looks like it's missing two screws for the handle, uh, which is lovely because that means it has two holes in it, so you're not gonna really going to be able to drink out of it, which is unfortunate, but still, really awesome piece. Uh, definitely something I've never seen before. I actually, I saw another one at an auction right after I bought this. Not from Trey Sassi, um, but a, just a different artillery sign like this. Yeah, but overall, really cool piece. Um, gotten some really nice World War One stuff and some really good trench art in lately. And yeah, this is just another piece for the, the set. So yeah, I hope you uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I certainly did. Uh, please leave a comment down below. Love hearing from you guys. Uh, thank you all for watching. Happy collecting. And I'll see you all again very soon.